Hello, brothers and sisters. I am Prophet Bradley from St. Paul, Minnesota. And I got some good, very good uh, information for you today. You're going to love this, promise you. Okay, um, first thing I want to talk about is there is coming a total solar eclipse on April 8th. 2024, which is the very first day of God's very first month, Nisan. Okay, um, there was a total solar eclipse, and remember, solar eclipses affect the Gentiles, lunar eclipses affect the Jews. Okay, um, there was a total solar eclipse on August. 21st, 2017. And it went from Washington State up in the northwest corner across America all the way down to South Carolina. Okay. That was August 21st, 2017. Now, um, the total solar eclipse on, on April 8th is going to be going from Texas all the way up to Maine. And I believe the trajectory path, they cross um, in about Illinois, by kind of by Missouri, okay? But what's important, um, I want you guys to know, is that in between August 21st, 2017 and April 8th, 2024, a guy down in Alabama did the math. It's exactly six years, six months, six weeks, and six days to the day. <laughs> you want a confirmation? April 8th, the very first day of God's first month. When he says in Joel 2, verse 23, that's the month he's going to pour his spirit out. And now I asked Holy Ghost about this. I said, four sixes, um, the year, the month, the week, and the day. Why didn't you do the hour and the minute, too, for all these people that don't get it? You know what he told me? He, he asked me, he said, Brad, he said, what is six times four? That's all he asked me. He said, what is six times four? And I said, well, 24. And he said, that will be the year of the priesthood. Okay? 2024 will be the year that this takes place. April, uh, Passover in April, when the light and the darkness come together. And I'm going to show you this in detail. You're going to love it. And... 2024 is the year, and 24 is the Hebraic numeric value of the priesthood because you have 12 tribes in Israel and 12 apostles in the New Testament church. So it's not a coincidence, okay? Um, it's kind of like um, when Babylon's, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon fell, the handwriting on the wall. God repeats himself, though a hand didn't show up. This is handwriting on the wall. Okay. Let's see what else I got for you. You're going to love this. I, I did. Holy Ghost. Indignation. Okay. We're talking about the darkness. God uses the word indignation in place of this coming darkness during the Passover. Okay? I'll show you. Um, you see it in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 13, verse 5. Okay? Isaiah 13. Verse 5. Now, hear what he's saying. First, in verse 4, he mentions um, North Korea, Russia, Iran, and China. 
um, great assembly of nations gathered together. Verse 5, God's talking about his judgment. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Well, if it's coming from the end of heaven, that would either be cosmos, space dust, and maybe a planet, and or demon spirits. And I'm going to show you where these demons show up in the darkness. You're going to love it. Okay, and then, um, well, let me show you that right away. Um, it's found in Psalms, you know, because people say, um, people say, oh, there ain't no demons going to show up when, when God tells his people to stay indoors. Turn to Psalms chapter 78, verse 49. Now, back, if you back up, to verse 42, God is talking about the plagues of Egypt and what some, a lot of the things that happened. You can read from verse 42 to verse 49, but I'm going to talk, we're talking about the indignation, this darkness that's coming during Passover at the end of April 2024, which is about less than seven months away. Okay, this is dealing with the darkness. He uses the word indignation for darkness. I, I love this when Holy Ghost showed me this. Psalm 78, verse 49. He, God, cast upon them, um, Egypt, the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. These demons will be let go during the darkness. Um, Exodus chapter 10 uh, verses 21 through 23. This was the very first plague of darkness. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out the hand towards heaven that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. Were they feeling the demons there? I mean, have you ever felt darkness before? And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Three days. They saw not one another, neither rose from any from his place. They didn't move because they couldn't. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. These were angels inside of their houses when they were uh, tucked in for that Passover. It doesn't say it had light in their town, light in their dwellings where they were told to be. That's the angels were the light. It wasn't God Almighty. Okay? And then you see the second, um, God does things in threes, where it's the heavens, the earth, or the darkness um, being repeated for Passover. That was the first one. The second one I told you was the body of Christ, or which is symbolic of Jesus, coming off the cross, three days of darkness in the tomb. Again, the light shows up with the darkness. Okay, and then in Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2, um, Arise, shine, for the light has come, and darkness shall cover the earth. Okay, every single time God does this, the light shows up with the darkness. And the reason is, this coming light is a present to his glorious bride for the marriage wedding feast up in heaven after we are raptured after Jesus takes us home, okay? And it's also to protect us. See, when this darkness comes, Satan is going to be thrown down to the earth. With uh, There's already demons on the earth, but he's, Satan himself is going to be thrown down to the earth to possess or infect the Antichrist, and he knows his time is short. Well, when, when that happens, God counters that 
with this light uh, that he pours out on his people. Uh, he's going to pour his spirit out on all flesh. And when he pours his spirit out on his people, we're going to have glorified bodies. Satan can't touch us. They can, he can't hurt us in any way, shape, or form. I give you all power of the old, over the enemy. and by, Nothing by any means shall hurt you. So when the darkness comes, the light comes. And here's the reason why he gives us this light power, okay, is so we can tell the world, no, this is not the Antichrist. This is not the Christ. This is the Antichrist. And Satan would uh, come against us to kill us all if we, didn't, if we weren't protected by this light that God is going to pour upon us that's going to be seen. That is the reason why the light is coming. To, uh, so we can do miracles, glorify the Lord, and then get out of here with a short work, okay? That's heavy, okay? And I'm going to show you a lot more about this here real quick, okay? Um, oh, by the way, today um, they did that emergency broadcast thing. That's connected to AI, okay? And when God talks about in Daniel... Chapter 12, verse 4, the travel shall increase and knowledge shall increase. He's talking about AI. This has just begun, folks. You know, of course, we'd be learning knowledge, but this AI stuff is what he's talking about in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. Okay. Now, um, oh, you're going to like this. Um, the, well, I'm not done with the Indian nation yet. No, I'll show you some more stuff. Um, this was prophesied by Daniel in chapter 8, verses 18 and 19, as a vision that was coming. Okay, Daniel chapter 8, verse 18 and 19. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face towards the ground. This is Daniel, God is speaking to him. But he touched me and set me upright. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. That's what he's talking about, this coming darkness. For at the time appointed... God's feasts are his, times appointed, Passover, the end shall be, okay? And then we see it again. Um, with uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3, I believe. Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 3. It's talking about this coming time appointed. I thought this might be the rapture before, okay? But it's not. This is talking about, this vision he's mentioning here is talking about this God pouring his spirit out in the darkness showing up at the same time. Remember what we just read in Daniel? Okay. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. There it is again. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Okay. Um, I've been waiting for this vision since March 3rd of 1998. It'll be 26 years. And, oh, by the way, check out my last Passover video where I blow my chauffeur. I prayed to the Lord 
for the rain. He gives it to us next year, which will be April 2024. Okay, isn't that cool? God answers prayer. All right. Uh, Micah 7 verse 9. Micah is talking about the indignation some more. Micah 7, verse 9. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring forth, he will bring me forth to the light See, indignation with the light again. And I shall behold his righteousness. Okay, and then we see in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. Therefore, wait upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to gather the nations, that I may assemble the, assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them, just like the Spirit, you can pour the in, till I pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger for all the earth. It's darkness is going to cover the entire earth. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Okay. I hope you got that because you need to understand. Oh, by the way, indignation is defined as anger and hatred for evil that pleases God. That's what the word indignation means. I'm showing you indignation is darkness, but that's the meaning of the word indignation. Okay, Isaiah 26, 20. Again, I'll mention... Um, verses connected to this. Isaiah 26, verse 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation or darkness is past. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Okay, let's see. Now, the darkness comes in threes. Exodus, Jesus in the tomb, and then for us in Passover 2024. Now I'm going to show you some connections uh, concerning Satan being thrown down during this darkness. Hey, the Antichrist is coming. He's almost here, okay? And uh, Satan is going to fill him right up. And when he does, um, you're going to have Satan on the earth. And here's what it says about this, okay? You find it in Revelation chapter 12. I'm going to read a few. Verse 4. Now, this is talking about Satan getting thrown out of heaven. And his tail, Satan's tail, drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Stars from heaven being thrown to the earth. Get that. So I'm going to show you something. Don't, don't forget it. Stars of heaven. Demons. Fallen angels thrown to the earth. <clears throat> and, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragons, Satan, stood before the woman who was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as it was born. That is Revelation 12, 4. Okay, and then we see Revelation 12, 9. And the, <coughs> excuse me. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay? 
And the next one you're going to want to look at <clears throat> is Revelation 12.12. 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe! When Satan gets thrown down in this darkness from the second heaven where, where he's at right now. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. And this is why we get glorified bodies. He's taking the body of the Antichrist here. And he's going to start whacking Christians. You're going to want a glorified body, trust me. The devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The rapture isn't very far away from this Passover. It's going to be the first half of June, actually. Okay, I'm not giving you the hour and the day. I'm telling you the season. Late spring. Um, Summer is June 20th, so it'll be the first half of June 2024 when Jesus comes back for us. We will have glorified bodies at this time, all right? <clears throat> but um, you see it, now make the connection, okay? Isaiah chapter 13, verse 10. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. And the sun shall be darkened in its going forth, and the moon shall not cause its light to shine. Um, God says that the stars of heaven shall, be, shall fall to the earth shall be thrown down to the earth. Okay, basically what that is, <clears throat> when the stars of heaven fall to the earth in the natural, it's a repeat of the third of the stars from heaven being thrown down to the earth. You see, the fallen angels that were in heaven, a third of them were thrown down to the earth with Satan, okay? They're the demons that are going to be there in the darkness. And God says that the stars of heaven will fall to the earth. That's in the natural. But the fallen angel stars that were thrown out of heaven to the earth, they're going to be on the earth during this darkness, released to destroy unbelievers and, and believers that do not obey God for this coming third Passover, okay? You need to understand that. You can, otherwise, it'll cost you your life. This ain't no game, folks. I mean, <laughs> if you think it is, you're going to find it. Okay, it was in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, where God said... Well, let me read it to you. Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Behold, uh, no. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Okay? So that Jesus starts talking there. So, here is the program. You're going to see Russia attack Europe. I told you that in um, some videos before. They're already lining up and getting NATO ready for that one. Satan's going to attack Europe, and he's going to get the best of them. Uh, Putin, Russia, too. They're together. Satan and Putin are together. Okay, and then Satan and Putin are going to attack Israel. That's the Ezekiel 38, 39 war. And then Satan is going to use North Korea, China, Iran, and China to attack Babylon, America. And I showed you that in other videos. But I wanted to show you these three things. The four sixes in between these two trajectory um, paths that are 
One took place, the other one has taken place on April 8th, the very first day of God's very first month in which this happens. Okay, don't forget that. I've shown you the, the six factor, the indignation factor with the evil angels released during the darkness in Psalm 78, verse 49. Make sure you understand that. Oh, um, it also, God also mentions, not just in Isaiah, uh, he mentions in Jeremiah 50, verse 25, he mentions, um, well, let me read it. The Lord hath opened his armory and hath brought forth the weapons of his indignation. That's the darkness. For this is the work of the Lord God of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans, Babylon, America. Okay. Okay, and we got Isaiah 34, 2. He talks 34, 2. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. Remember, this darkness covers the entire earth. And his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Praise God. Jeremiah 10.10. 10. Jeremiah 10, verse 10. I'll just read it. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble, and the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. Dark, the darkness that he's sending during the Passover in 2024. The angels will produce the light inside of your, wherever you're at, and they will protect you from these demons outside. Don't look out the windows. Don't go outside. Don't open the door. These demons can imitate people's voices that you know. And it might sound like your mother, oh, let me in, let me in. You open the door, you get it. You understand? It's not a game. Okay? All right. Yeah, the darkness comes in threes, just like... Um, Exodus with Jesus and then us in April, Passover. Um, let me see what else I have here for you. God fights for us. You know that. That's found in Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4, verse 20. Exodus, chapter 14, verse 14. And Second Chronicles 20, verse 17. Our God fights for us. Isn't that cool? Praise God for that. Thank you, Lord. We th all thank you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Okay. Let's see what. The light in the dwellings will be angels. Remember that. They'll be giving you your, um, what you're, you're supposed to do with this power that's going to be put, he's going to be giving you instructions in your agenda, all right? Um, Lord told me, when you call my name, you refer to me as Lord Jesus, because there's a lot of people named Jesus. There's only one Lord Jesus. And God the Father told me, when you refer to me, you refer to me as God Almighty, because there's lots of gods. In fact, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 refers as Satan is God of this world. So when you want to talk to God the Father, refer to him in his proper God Almighty. Okay? Lord Jesus, God Almighty. That's what he told me to call him. He didn't. He, God, get rid of that. Jesus, you can get rid of that. Lord Jesus. God Almighty, that's what he wants to hear, okay? Um, yeah, it's a repeat of the Passover. Um, I really don't have a whole lot more to show you guys, but um, Lord willing, I will make another video as soon as the Holy Ghost shows me what you guys want to see. 
And let's pray. Ah, our Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, give these people, all these brothers and sisters and all these people watching favor, goodness, mercy, and grace. Increase their faith. Give them understanding, wisdom, knowledge, and counsel from your Holy Spirit, Father, in Jesus' name I pray. And we'll bless you for it and glorify your holy name according to your word. And we will thank you, Father. People, it's been a blessing to be with you again. And as soon as the uh, Holy Ghost gives me enough for another video, you got it, okay? Until then, have a very blessed Tabernacles. We're still in the Feast of Tabernacles. It goes um, until October 7th, I believe. But it's a feast of rest and make an offering to the Lord, even by fire, even if it's just a song or a prayer from your heart, okay? But have a very blessed day and we'll see you um, next time, Lord willing. Have a very blessed day, my brothers and sisters, okay?